Ghadbaniya, the ghadab, the anger, the wrath within the human being. The angry soul. Right? This is the angry soul. The nafs which is which is angry. And another uh, aspect of the internal human nature is the lustful nature, the lustful soul. And many sins that a human being commits is due to the lustful nature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this particular verse which the brother recited upon which brother was it? Oh, okay. This is just gone out, okay. The brother recited um, Allah gives two examples in this particular verse. Allah talks about aqeedah first. La yadu'una ma'allahi ilahan akhar. Those who do not, the virtues of those people who do not associate partners with Allah, so they believe in the oneness of Allah. And then after Allah says, وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ They do not kill anyone except by due rights. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ They don't kill a soul. We just read, heard the translation. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمُ اللَّهُ Which Allah has prohibited. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Unless, unless it's in a just way, and I mean we can't take that justice in our own hands, but there are rules of course. And then Allah said, وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And they do not commit adultery, they do not fornicate. Killing someone and fornication. Two examples of the two natures of the human being. The first one, to murder someone, killing someone. That's connected to the, the angry nature of the soul. And وَلَا يَزْنُونَ The lustful nature of the soul. Many of the sins, we should all think about this, you know, most of the sins that we as human beings commit, they go back to these two aspects of the human nature. The, the ghadab, the wrath, the angry nature, the angry soul, and the lustful soul. And that's why Allah says in another place, إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٌ وَمَا أُغَرِّ وَنَفْسِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٌ This soul um, uh, orders and commands the person to commit a sin. It makes you sin, the soul. The soul makes you a sin. And that's why we need to work on our soul. We need that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to purify our internal, our internal, our hearts. And that's why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُدْغَى إِذَا صَلُوحَتْ صَلُوحَ الْجَسَدِ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدِ كُلُّ There's, beware there's a part in your body. If that is corrupt, your whole body will become corrupt. And if you've corrected that part of your body, if that part of your body is soul, the internal, and he said, Allah wa qalb, that's the heart, then your whole body is sound. And this is why Allah said, Yo wa la banun, illa man Allah bi qalbin salim. On the day of judgment when a human being comes, nothing will benefit him except the one who comes to Allah. On the day of judgment, on Yawm al Qiyamah, with Qalbun Salim, with a sound heart. So we need to work on our hearts, and working on our hearts will actually help us avoid sins. Because once our connection, brothers and sisters, our connection is strong with Allah, we have that strong link and attachment and bond with Allah, our Creator, Khaliquna, then it's very difficult to fall into committing a sin. The problem that we have today, many of us, is that our connection, our relationship, our bond with our Creator is maybe there's no connection or even if it is it's very weak and because it's very weak it's very easy to commit a sin you know if you love someone if you love someone you know people in, in, in marriages when they say oh you know if you love your spouse and it's very difficult for you to you know do some dodgy stuff on the side okay <laughs> that that love stops you how can i do this now, I'm, 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 i absolutely adore and love my wife or my husband right it's difficult for people Exactly the same scenario, if you have this extreme love and connection and relationship with Allah, it's impossible for you to commit a sin. And that's why we should worship Allah through love more than fear. Remember, Iman al khawfi wa raja. Our, our Iman, Deen is based on hope and fear. Iman is between hope and fear. We fear Allah as well as we have hope to enter Jannah. Excessive hope is also wrong and despairing and losing all hope is also wrong and we should we should worship Allah with love and fear both have been mentioned in the Quran وَلِمَنْ خَافُ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتًا in Surah Al-Rahman the one who fears the reckoning and standing before his Lord Allah says that he shall enter Jannah وَلِمَنْ خَافُ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتًا so we need to fear Allah but at the same time or probably more and I actually mentioned this to a lot of brothers that Especially in this day and age, more than fear, we should try to create that love. Worship Allah. Do not offer your salah 
as a burden. That, you know what, if I don't pray, I don't wake up, I'm going to get punished. Don't think about hellfire and worship Allah. Think about parallel. And even a higher level and status is not even thinking about, I mean, this is a very high level, not even thinking about paradise, thinking about Allah Himself. We want Allah more than even paradise. In the hereafter, the greatest ni'mah and gift and bounty in the hereafter will be the vision and, and the sight of Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, the ladina ahsan al husna wa ziyadatun, the ziyadatun extra is the sight of Allah. And there are numerous hadiths of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna kumna tarawna rabbakum kama tarawna al-qamar. You will see your Lord in the day of judgment like you see the moon. So, this is a higher level. Not even worshipping Allah for paradise, worshipping Allah for Allah. Worship Him, have this love, extreme, excessive amount of love for your Creator, for our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we do that, brothers and sisters, then it's difficult. to com It's difficult what? To commit sins. Now it's not difficult to avoid sins. We're not talking about avoiding sins. Now we're talking about it's difficult to commit sin. Someone tells you, even someone forces you to commit a sin, you can't do it. And that's why when we look at the previous Salaf and the early scholars, some of them are really pious and righteous people. People are oppressing them, suppressing them, punishing them, uh, warning them, and, and threatening them to put them into some boiling oil or fire or whatever. Yet they are ready and prepared to give their lives. Why? Because it's that love and that connection with Allah. They are ready to sacrifice their life. If you don't have that love and connection with Allah, then it's very, it, it, you know, that's, that's the root. You know, if we want to avoid sins, that's, that's the root, that's what we need to, you know. And how do we, you know, bring that connection and that relationship? And there are ways, I mean, there are ways, uh, you know, number one, excessively making dua to Allah, and being punctual with your, with your prayers and, and your um, ibadat and worshipping Allah. And, you know, there are many other ways, recitation of the Quran in a regular, you know, uh, regularly. So anyway, going back to what I was saying, that we need to, we know that we live in a time where it's difficult. There's, we live in a time where we're facing a lot of trials and tribulations and tests around us. Very easy, very easy. If we don't have connection with Allah, very easy to commit sin. So the first solution is what? Build that connection with Allah. Right? That's the first. Once we do that, then I don't really need to go into how it's going to be easy for you to avoid sin. But there are many other things. Now, in this particular area, that gender interaction, the male and the female, Muslim, you know, brothers and sisters, Islam, Allah says, the verse I was talking about, وَلَا تَقَرَبُ zina. Do not even get close to fornication. Do not even come close to zina. Islam takes the, you know, the preventative measure, prohibits all those things that lead to a person fornicating. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in one hadith, Zina al-ayni, another. The zina, the fornication of the eye is to look lustful, lustful gazing. Wa zina al-yadi al the zina of the hand is to touch. And wa zina rijl al-mashi, the zina of the feet is to walk towards the evil activity. And then wa qalbu yusaddiquhu wa yukadibuhu. Eventually you actually end up committing that actual sexual intercourse or you may not. But it's still it's it's the zina of the eye, zina of the hand, <coughs> zina of the feet. Okay? Zina of the ear is listening to unlawful and lustful things. So Islam takes the preventative measure because Islam recognizes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes this that the weakest instinct for the human being is his sexual instinct. It's very easy. Allah recognizes. Allah is the one who created us, right? The easiest way for a person to fall into an unlawful activity is through his sexual instinct. And that's the reason why Shaytan, Iblis, Satan, uses that, that particular area to make the human slip and make him commit a sin. Because this is the, you know, the, the, the most vulnerable part of, of, of the believer, okay? So, Therefore, Islam takes a preventative measure. And one of the main reasons is that because we need to protect ourselves. Not just married people, even unmarried people. You safeguard yourself, you protect yourself before marriage, after marriage. After marriage, of course, is very important. Islam wants to keep and preserve the family system. You know, we live in a time where, you know, people, there's mixed gatherings and people will work in, you know, mixed environments. The husband wakes up and goes to his workplace. The wife goes, 